Good evening, everybody, and welcome to a special edition of Kilt and Culture. In honor of the season, we thought we'd uh, run down some Halloween lore for you. Halloween, also known as Samhain, was basically created by the Irish. It is a very Celtic holiday and a big part of this time of year and of course of the culture that all of this springs from is ghosts and goblins and things that go bump in the night. So we're going to run down for you a few of our favorite Celtic beasties. And since the Irish get so much attention this time of year, we thought we'd skew it a little bit more towards the Scottish side just to give our Scottish brethren a little, uh, a little bit of limelight. But some of these creatures actually do range across all of the Celtic lands. With that, we're going to do our top seven Scottish monsters. Number seven, the Slua. If you travel in Ireland or the Hebrides, keep an eye on the dark brooding sky and listen for the flapping of wings. Maybe it's just a few crows, or maybe it's the Slua. The name means the host, and this malevolent flock of bird-like spirits fly through the night sky hunting mortals. They will snatch you up so as to drop you from a great height, or they may drag you down into the earth, even to hell itself. Some consider them to be fallen angels. Others say they are the unforgiven dead. It may also be that they are the Gaelic version of the wild hunt, the ghostly hounds and spirits who travel the skies in winter, foretelling of death and disaster. One witness told the folklorist Alexander Carmichael that they fly about, quote, in great clouds, up and down the face of the world, like the starlings, and come back to the scenes of their earthly transgressions. Number six, the Irsh Uska. You may have heard of the Kelpies, the Celtic shape-shifting water horses found in streams or rivers. Well, the Irsh Uska is the fiercest and most dangerous of them all. This fiend disguises itself as a fine pony or a handsome man. You will find it along the shores of the sea or large lochs. As a horse, it will bid you to ride it. Perhaps you will take it home as a prized addition to your farm. If you are a woman, it may appear as a beautiful man who will invite you to dance and embrace. But don't be fooled. This fiend's lovely skin adheres to its human prey. Once you touch it or mount, you are trapped and the creature will dive to the depths of the loch with you in its grip. There you shall drown, and the Kelpie will tear you apart. It will devour all but your liver, which will float to the surface. I was Number five, bad. the Nuklavi. If you journey to the Orkney Islands, far to the north, perhaps the most terrifying fellow you may meet is the Nuklavi. A native of the sea, he appears as part horse, part man, with the human torso rising from the center of the horse's back. His mouth is that of a pig, or perhaps a whale. But most horrific of all, he has no skin. As you look, you will see his thick black blood coursing through sickeningly yellow veins, around pale sinews, and powerful grotesque muscles which pulsate as he moves toward you. The Nuklavi is pure malevolence. His breath withers crops and infects livestock. He is the bringer of devastation and famine. In fact, he is so feared that the Orkney Islanders will not speak his name without immediately saying a prayer afterwards. The Nuklavi is a hunter of mortals. If he chases you, your only chance is to head for the nearest brook. The only thing that can stop him is fresh flowing water. Number four, one of my personal favorites, the red cap. The red cap, also known as the powery, is a foul and murderous goblin of the border regions. He makes his home in the ruins of castles and churches, especially along lonely roads through the moors. He prefers those places which were once the scenes of murder and battle, and in this gloomy land, there are plenty of those. The red cap appears as a short, 
thick-set man with long fang-like teeth and bony fingers that end in talons. His large eyes glow a fiery red, and his grisly hair streams down his shoulders. The red cap wears iron boots and carries a pike staff, that is, a combination of a spear and an axe. When travelers take refuge in his lair, the red cap attacks from above, either pelting them with huge stones or skewering them with his pike staff. After the kill, he soaks his cap in his victim's blood in order to maintain the color. It's said that if the cap ever loses its color, the red cap will perish. Number three, the Bavin Shi. The Bavin Shi is a wanderer of the wooded highlands. A dark fairy, she appears as a beautiful young woman wearing a long green gown. However, if you look closely, you will notice her feet are in fact the hooves of deer. This sultry vampire preys upon male hunters as they stalk deer alone in the forest. She is drawn to them by the scent of blood on their clothing. Often she will manifest in the evening after a lonely hunter expresses his desire for female companionship. Drifting into the firelight, she will dance with her victim until he is exhausted. Then the mysterious woman's nails turn to talons with which she will slash open the man's chest and drain him of all his blood. Number two, the Benya. Known in both Scotland and Ireland, the Benya is among the most ancient of spirits. Her name means simply the washerwoman. But this is no scullery maid. You may meet her near water perhaps the rocky banks of a mountain stream. From a distance she may appear quite normal, sometimes an old hag, sometimes a beautiful young woman. But move closer, you may notice she has only one nostril, one long tooth, webbed feet, or a single low-hanging breast. She'll be hard at work pounding laundry on the rocks, but no, no, it's not laundry. She's washing the bloodied grave clothes of people who are close to death. There is a slim chance she will grant you a wish if you act in a certain way. But it is just as likely that she encompasses your doom, or the doom of someone you love dearly. Number one, the Grey Man of Ben Makhthui. Lurking among the misty hilltops of Ben Makhthui, is a terrifying beast. Hill walkers, hikers, and tourists have felt the icy presence of a thing which is not quite a man. We say felt because rarely has the creature been seen directly. Rather, it is described as a presence, or at best the vague shape of a huge shambling man in the snow and fog. Hardened hikers are reduced to shivering wrecks as a pervasive sense of dread comes over them. Then they hear the ominous footsteps behind them. And then they run. Known as the Liachmur, or the Big Grey Man, this yeti-like creature has haunted Ben Makhdui for over 100 years. The best record of an encounter with him is from Professor Norman Colley, who in 1891 wrote graphically of his terrifying encounter with the Grey Man. Kali himself thought perhaps his senses were playing tricks on him. That is, until he compared notes with other explorers and found that they too had met the creature. All speak of the sheer terror that accompanied the creature. Once experienced, few climbers return to Ben Makdui and the terror that lurks there. But if you dare, the mountain and the gray man await you. What is your favorite Celtic monster? What is your favorite Celtic ghost story? Irish or uh, Scottish or Welsh, any of them. There's so much out there. Share with us in the comments if you want to. Uh, let us know what you'd like us to talk about uh, anon and uh, we'll be happy to be creepy with you. And with that, 
a happy Samhain, happy Halloween to all of you. Stay warm, stay safe, keep all the doors and windows locked. <laughs>